Welcome to Being a Successful Leader with Carl Welty. Carl is a leadership pioneer with years of challenging leadership and consulting experience. Here's Carl with some valuable insights, practical and proven methods for being a successful leader. Greetings, everybody. Carl Welty here, your host for the uh, ongoing podcast series, Being a Successful Leader. We meet once a week, uh, 15 minutes to a half hour topics on uh, leadership. The series revolves around my three leadership imperatives. Number one, uh, leadership begins with you. And so uh, my first imperative is being a a self-aware and skillful leader. Then you uh, reach out and uh, develop a sound strategy, which is my second imperative. And sound strategy involves the uh, the identity of your group, your uh, organization, uh, which is your uh, uh, purpose, uh, why do we exist, and your core values, what do we stand for. And then uh, that's fairly timeless, but use it as your home base, and you launch out from there and uh, set a direction. And direction is all about uh, uh, a translatable, I call it vision, kind of unique to uh, me, a uh, vision that's not abstract. You uh, you need to uh, be able to uh, have an actionable vision with vision elements. And then from your vision, where are we going? What does it look like when we're there? You then develop a strategic path, a set of strategic initiatives. And then finally, uh, the resultant actions. So that's the second uh, imperative. And the third one then is so you don't uh, lead in a vacuum. And so you need to have a... Uh, an organization of, of folks that uh, want to rally around this sound strategy that uh, you've architected perhaps with your leadership team. Uh, and so you want a, a culture of commitment, not compliance, culture of commitment. People want to uh, work versus have to work. So those are three imperatives, uh, being a self-aware and skillful leader, having a sound strategy, and then having a culture of commitment. And so we have a topic of interest that falls under one of those each each time. This is the 47th episode, and you can find past podcasts by going to uh, webtalkradio.net, webtalkradio.net, and then uh, to click on channels at the top, scroll down to uh, the uh, leadership in the workplace, and uh, then hit on my uh, icon. Uh, being a successful leader, and you can see all the past episodes there, and then you can click on those to hear it again or hear it for the first time. Also, another resource, and I like this, that we talk about these things in kind of uh, summary fashion. If you want to dwell into them, you have the uh, the uh, past web uh, podcasts, but also I have three books. One that Each one aligns with one of the three imperatives I just talked about, and you can go to Wealthy.com, my website, Scroll over to leadership resources, uh, then go down to books or click on books, and you'll see the three books outlined there and how to order them from uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, or the publisher, the Ewing's uh, Publishing Company. So again, I like this. We talk about it. You can look, look at uh, more detail if you want through the book, uh, past what, uh, podcasts, and then have the books as a, and, the, and the podcast as an ongoing resource. Today, the topic is constructive discipline, constructive discipline. If you follow uh, the uh, principles and the practices that we t- discussed in uh, Building Commitment, my book, Building Commitment, uh, you're going to be in really good shape and shouldn't have much problem with uh, people getting out of line. Uh, and the, the uh, again, the uh, the tenets there, the building blocks are number one is the selection, having a target selection process. So you assure a good fit between your the performance requirements of your position uh, our positions and the qualifications and, and passion, if you will, of individuals are considering. So you you go through a target selection process and and a target interview and come up with the uh, the best candidate there. So selection, and then uh, you get to work with uh, clarity, making sure that you the new person is uh, uh, and you share have shared expectations on the role and ongoing set of results that, that position is organized to achieve. Uh, so clarity is the next. And the third of my uh, building blocks under building commitment is performance coaching. You don't say, okay, I'm here if you need me, but you get involved. You have ongoing conversations about the work. How's it going? And you uh, provide some coaching. Uh, and, and early on, you provide some direction, a lot of how-tos, but you back off of that 
as the person matures. So selection, clarity, uh, performance coaching, and then you put it all together in growing teams. So if you follow those practices and principles outlined in the Building Commitment book, you're going to be in, in, in good shape. But occasionally there still will be occasion where uh, there's some uh, misconduct uh, or some performance that doesn't come up to snuff and a person can do it, you know, if they wanted to. Uh, so that's where uh, the the internal self-discipline is not working and you need to oppose, impose some external discipline to help the person help themselves get back in line. And that's what constructive discipline is all about. And again, 99, hopefully, percent of the time, you're not going to need it. Uh, people, if you follow the practice we just talked about, are going to be in, uh, in really performing uh, well for you. But there will be that occasion where the self-discipline is not kicking in and you have to uh, impose uh, external discipline. There are two uh, occasions, as I mentioned already, about constructive discipline. One is misconduct. And the other is not as apparent, and I don't know what t any people that talk about this too much besides me, but where a per person is not performing up to a minimum acceptable level, and they could do it if they wanted to. In other words, it's not a skill deficiency or an ability deficiency. They could do it if they wanted to. So we'll talk about that as we go along uh, here. Hopefully, if you have occasion or you've had occasion to use constructive discipline, you have some internal or external organizational resources at your disposal. Uh, maybe a human resource department in your organization, or if you're small, you don't have that kind of department, uh, maybe yet. Uh, and so you have an outside resource of some sort, consulting or attorney, what have you, that can help you. But still, you need to be versed in this as a as a leader as to when and how to use it. And then hopefully, again, you can avail yourself of maybe some uh, outside counsel or inside counsel, or maybe you're versed enough in it. And maybe today there'll be just a few little reminders and, and tips for you in using constructive discipline. So what is constructive discipline? When we talk about it, it's, you know, it, it, it's it, when a person's not self-disciplining, uh, then we need to exert some external discipline uh, to help them help themselves correct their misconduct or perform at the minimum acceptable level they can do it. So those are two uh, uh, applications again. And it's a series of progressive steps to uh, help the person help themselves, uh, to motivate themselves. There's a caveat I have for you at this point, though, is that don't jump to use a uh, constructive discipline. In my experience, uh, sometimes uh, managers, supervisors uh, uh, like to get involved with constructive discipline because there's some steps. It's fairly tangible. There's uh, some letter writing involved, and uh, you're doing things. Well, yeah, but maybe it's not timely, or maybe you haven't fully analyzed just what's going on before you jump to discipline. So take it, take it, uh, uh, analyze first before you jump to discipline. Uh, unless you have a serious uh, 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 safety violation, there are a couple of times when right away, you, in fact, you maybe go right to discharge. Uh, which is the final step of the constructive disciplinary process, where a safety, uh, serious safety violation occurs. Guys throwing darts off the third floor of the plant, uh, or moral turpitude. You can't, you know, you can't afford to have that person around any longer. You know, you're not going to fool around. So there are times you go right to discharge. So those two occasions I just mentioned. One of the things I want to uh, remind you of again, what's nice about this, you can go back and either read the books or, or look at the past podcast, uh, my model on analyzing or performance analysts, analyzing uh, uh, performance analysis process, uh, analyzing and resolving performance discrepancies. Very, very solid model that you need to go through a few times when you have a performance discrepancy, a difference between what you'd like to have happen and what is happening. You walk through that a few times, you're going you're gonna to get the hang of it. And so whenever you have... A, a performance concern where the cause is not obvious. You want to get involved in my performance analysis process laid out in the book, uh, uh, Building Commitment in the Coaching Chapter. And there's also a, a example in there you can follow and, uh, and, and use it accordingly. Very, very good process. And out of that, you'll, uh, if you arrive at, uh, 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 I have two zones, environmental motivational zone and an ability slash skill deficiency zone. 
And uh, if uh, you, you get to the environmental motivational zone and you get down to arranging consequences to make performance matter, that's where discipline may fit in. But you need to do the analysis first, unless it's one of those uh, plate uh, violations we just mentioned. With that out of the way, that admonition and the caveat, let's look at the purpose again of uh, constructive discipline. Um, you, you provide the, the appropriate environmental motivational consequences to help the person help themselves. This is why the term constructive is used, not just, just constructive discipline. And, uh, and uh, as of late, there's another adjective that's been used. It's called positive discipline. So maybe you have positive constructive discipline. I don't know. But it, 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 the opposite is punitive. So what we're trying to do here, or recommending that you do here, is try to help the person help themselves and not punish them, hurt them, uh, trying to help them help themselves. And again, as I've said already, if they don't avail themselves of the opportunities you afford them as you go through the disciplinary process step by step, uh, you can skip steps too, but normally you go step by step, which we'll talk about in a second. They end up discharging themselves because they haven't taken a veil of the opportunities you provided. Okay, the whole constructive discipline process is based on a principle called the just cause principle. Just cause principle. It's a form of industrial jurisprudence, if you will. And there are uh, some steps here, three steps. So uh, you can go back and we, if this is new to you, you can... Uh, uh, replay this. Uh, no, number one step, did the individual or individuals commit the infraction? Do you have the right person or people? Uh, here you have direct evidence, you know, it's been seen, uh, or you have circumstantial evidence. The, fa the facts that point to this individual individuals, the same set of facts, uh, knock everybody out of uh, contention for this infraction. Uh, what, and then what rules, regulations, or codes of conduct have been violated here? So, number one, do you have the right individual? Do you have the evidence, direct or circumstantial, and what has been violated? Number two, is the individual individuals culpable? Was it intentional or just an accidental kind of thing? Did they, they give it some forethought? Uh, and the number three of the three uh, pieces of just uh, cause principle is does a disciplinary action fit the infraction and the individual, the disciplinary action that you're going to uh, impose here, does it fit the individual uh, and the infraction? The infraction is how serious is the infraction? What is the usual penalty, so to speak, uh, for this kind of violation? And was it the typical type of dis disciplinary action for such behavior? What is the typical type for such behavior? Maybe you've got some history there or you get some counsel on that. So, does the disciplinary action fit the infraction? And how about the individual? What's the individual's past performance? Is this the first offense, series of offenses? Uh, is this the uh, 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 continuation of the same kind of behavior, different kind of behaviors? And you can lump behaviors together. You don't have to have different paths or trains for the different kinds of disciplinary action. You can you can lump them together as you work through the steps. Okay, those are the three uh the components of the just cause principle. Do you have the right individual or individuals? Uh, are they capable or is the person cap culpable? And uh, does the disciplinary action fit the infraction and the individual? So that's what you need to think through for your just cause principle. Now let's look at the steps. Uh, these are universally accepted and applied uh, steps. The first thing you want to do, and, and unless it's a serious violation, is coach, coach, coach. Console, uh, console, console. And again, if you follow the practices and principles recommended in the building commitment book, you've, uh, you've already had a lot of good performance coaching. But once in a while, people will fall out of, fall out of line. So the first step after coach, coach, coach is a, an oral reprimand. In positive discipline, we're calling this these days oral reminder. And you want to make a, a, a note of that. Uh, and uh, start your your file, if you will. And you want to you want to keep notes on all of this as you talk to folks. You're going to have individual files, perhaps notes, and you talk to this person on this date and what you talked about and so forth. And then as the as the uh, infraction, uh, the dis very uh, uh, performance discrepancy con continues, you then want to kind of make a little bit more uh, definitive your notes. So after oral recommend, you have another infraction. Uh, and again, you can skip steps here. 
uh, the second of the uh, steps is uh, out of the four steps we're going to talk about is the uh, written reprimand or in positive discipline, the rip- written reminder. So here are some tips there. Now, now you've, you know, coach, 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 console, 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 had an oral reminder and you documented that. And, and now you have a, a written reminder or written uh, reprimand. So some of the uh, things to do in, in, in your letter, now that you're going to give this letter to the person, uh, you're, you're, you're tightening down the screws here, you get more serious, and hopefully the person kind of wakes up and gets with it. Uh, one thing is you want to use your organization letterhead, your 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 letterhead for your company, your organization. Uh, you, it's addressed to the individual. It's a formal letter. The thing, the next thing is it's signed by the immediate supervising manager. And uh, if you're that person, you sign it. If you're a manager or leader that you have a first line uh, or the immediate supervisor manager, that person needs to sign it. Because if they don't agree with this and they don't sign it, if it's ever appealed and protested and it's adjudicated and the uh, the uh, immediate uh, supervising manager uh, doesn't go along with things, guess what? Uh, you lost the case. Okay, so... Uh, signed by the immediate supervising manager. Uh, another uh, several tips here. Uh, approval of hierarchy as required or deemed appropriate. Whatever your your uh, organization authority table uh, dictates here. Uh, you may have to get the, the supervisor manager may have to get the, the his boss's approval, uh, which is which is appropriate, but still have that person sign it. Supervising manager. The first sentence it sounds something like. This letter constitutes disciplinary action. Right away, boom, we're not fooling around. It's a very direct letter. We're not uh, beating around the bush here. Uh, and then the body of the letter, you kind of throw in the kitchen sink. You talked about we've coached and we've counseled and uh, gave every oral reminder on this date and the performance still continues or the, or the misperformance still continues. So you throw in the kitchen sink and the dates and that sort of thing in the uh, body of the letter. Then the last sentence uh, should read something like, Further continuation of the of the what's ever mentioned above, let's say misbehavior, are performing up to not performing up to minimum level, uh, will result in further disciplinary action up to and including discharge. In other words, continuation of the above mentioned will conti- will result in further disciplinary action up to including discharge. Whatever stage you're at in the uh, in the process, because the next stage after the written reprimand or written reminder is the decision making. Uh, leave, or uh, you know, as we say in the uh, uh, constructive discipline, not the positive dis- is uh, disciplinary suspension. Uh, and again, disciplinary suspension is different than uh, disciplinary or, uh, or layoff. Layoff uh, is, a, is a lack of work. So you don't say disciplinary layoff, it's disciplinary suspension. But in positive discipline, we tend to say disciplinary or decision-making leave. And what you typically do, you, you have another letter now. And um, if if you have the uh, traditional approach of time off or disparity suspension, it's usually two to five days. Again, you, you match it with the typical uh, penalty for this kind of uh, infraction and uh, the the uh, uh, person's history. Uh, and if it's a disciplinary decision-making leave, uh, you give the person a day or two to think about it. Now, this is quite different here. This is the positive discipline. You actually pay them, and you give them the letter, and you say, okay, I want you to think about this now. This is very, very serious, and I want you to come back in if you, two days, and uh, I'm going to have you sign this letter here that you agree that you will perform up to uh, requirements, and if you refuse, then uh, that uh, equates to a, a discharge. So you, you're putting the responsibility with the individual there. In both cases, you are. And in the constructive discipline, there's a time off without pay, disperse suspension, and then with decision-making leave, you put even more of the onus on the uh, the uh, person to make up their mind and come back and and say they're going to perform or they're not, and then adios. Okay. Uh, again, you can skip steps based upon the uh, performance discrepancy and the uh, history of the person and the seriousness of the infraction. And again, as we said, you can go right to discharge in some cases when you can't afford to keep the individual around. Uh, now, if the person uh, does perform as required, uh, you don't want to continue to hold this over a person's head. 
Uh, and so you want to kind of cleanse the record, if you will, the personnel file, the personnel jacket, typically a year, unless it's a serious uh, violation. And then you would take it out of the file because, again, you don't want to punish the individual. If, they, if there's another infraction, yeah, there's been a history here and so forth, but you need to kind of start over here. Uh, and maybe you have a, uh, you would keep it in the file a lot longer the second or third time, but hopefully that first time is, will uh, cure it. Uh, <clears throat> now, every, uh, every uh, manager, every supervisor, manager, leader needs to have the authority, if you will, for suspension pending investigation, not disperse suspension. Suspense means taking off the pro getting off the property, suspension pending investigation. Uh, and this this is where you need to, uh, there's a, been a, a, a violation of some sort, infraction of some sort, maybe tempers are flaring, and maybe there's more than one person involved. You need to get them off the property, out of the office, until uh, things cool down and you can have the proper, you or other folks, investigate what the heck's going on and what should we do. And, uh, uh, and and that's not a penalty. And so it may be that you pay him for some time off. Hopefully this takes just a short time. And if it turns into a disciplinary suspension, well, then then uh, there's a, already the, the clock has started. Uh, so that's that's very, very important because that 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 especially that first line uh, uh, front line manager there out in the field or at the office or whatever remote, remote location, they need to know that they can get the person off the property, then talk to you or authorities further up and find out just what they're going to do. Can't, can't afford to have the person linger around or stand around while they make a phone call. Okay, very important. Now, the, the I, I said there's two causes, occasions to use to construct this one. One is clear it's this misconduct. But the other one, again, I, I don't hear many people talk about that, is failure to perform up to a minimum acceptable level, and it is not an ability or skill deficiency. Remember in my uh, performance analysis model, I, I once you look at causation, after you've done your proper job of diagnosing the problem, uh, there's a uh, environmental motivational zone, if you will, and another zone is what I call the ability skill deficiency. So if the person cannot perform as uh, uh, desired and uh, you, uh, it, it, it's a need for skill, then they're training, coaching, that sort of thing. Uh, if you go farther and you, you're sure that they can't do it. It's just been a poor placement and it's ability deficiency. Don't, they don't have it within them to absorb the skill, no matter how good your coaching or training is. Then you got a round peg in a square hole or vice versa. And, and then the answer there is to demote, transfer, or terminate. So when it's an ability deficiency, you demote, transfer, or terminate. But what if it's not an ability deficiency? In other words, a person could do it. In fact, they have done it. Uh, perform up to an acceptable level if they want to. So now you're really into the going from the ability skill over to the environmental motivational zone. And so you have to make performance a matter. And that's where you have the constructive discipline process kick in. And then you just follow it the same way you do as a misconduct with the steps we just outlined. Okay. All right. In summary, uh, provided you a quick, yet a comprehensive, uh, uh, review, if you will, or maybe a, a, a preview, if you're new to this, of what disciplinary action is and how to go about it. Uh, the intent was not necessarily to make you an expert in this. Some of you may be there already, uh, but to rather equip you to, uh, with the clarity, confidence, and, and uh, knowledge to proceed on a logical course, if and when uh, self-control, self-discipline isn't there, and you had to exert some external discipline to uh, make performance matter for the individual, to help them help themselves. All right, so I hope you got a lot out of this. Again, won't have to use it very, very much, but hopefully you're, if you're not already knowledgeable, you're, you're on the way there and you can always replay this or, or uh, get, some, get some help if, if and hopefully if you need it, it's there. Okay, now next time, the preview of next time, we're gonna talk about continuous performance management. Now, what is that? Well, I contrast that with the uh, uh, the uh, despised annual performance review, performance appraisal, which is dreaded by both 
most managers and uh, associates. So we'll take a look at another way of uh, going about this because uh, knowing how we're doing is important, but maybe there's better ways than this dreaded annual performance review that uh, many of you still contend with, okay? So until next time, you take care of yourself and we'll see you next week.